In this video, we're going to go over the doors we made for the G.I. Joe Mobile Command Center. We're going to go over why the MCC needs doors, go over the origins of the MCC, and then look at the design and fabrication of the doors we made. All the G.I. Joes are asleep. This is our chance to break into the MCC. You trooper, climb up and go through one of those door holes. Yes, sir, Commander. I'm right on it. Uh, what, what's this? Let me try. What, what, what's going on? Usually this is wide open. What, what's going on? What's all the racket out here? I gotta go take a look. Mm, what do we got? Uh, looks like a couple snakes trying to sneak into the hen house in the middle of the night. It looks like the Joes put doors on these. Why, why would they do that? No, it's making it so hard to get in. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I think you should cease that activity right now. Unless you want me to lob a few grenades onto your noggins. Oh no, it's G.I. Joe. Let's get out of here quick. We can't get into the MCC anymore. Too bad this neighborhood's going downhill. Used to be you could leave your doors open all night. The G.I. Joe Mobile Command Center was a massive vehicle and really a playset at the same time. But with all the great features on the MCC, it didn't have doors in those openings. And as we saw, like that would have let Cobra easily sneak in when it was in its vehicle mode. So why weren't there doors on it? If we look in Volume 4 of Dan Klingensmith's great G.I. Joe books, there's a chapter on the MCC and there's some great pre-production photos that he's put in there. And you can see there are no doors, like there are just those hollow spaces. Now I thought maybe some of the early models would have doors in them, but maybe they got removed for cost or, you know, manufacturing, but I didn't see any. So maybe they just didn't want to put doors on it, or they couldn't figure out the mechanics of it, or maybe they were influenced by something else. Either way, I think it's time we put some doors in the MCC. So let's get to it. So the first thing I want to do is take measurements of the doors. They're also like oddly shaped and tapered a bit. And also we had to deal with the mechanics of them opening and closing, which kind of changes their performance. They're not like a standard door where they're in a fixed kind of wall. For the design of the doors, I looked at the flag and kind of like naval sort of doors, thinking of them being like armored and really strong. Also looked at some of the, um, you know, the kind of detail clues and, you know, design features that were in the MCC. So I ended up with a shape that kind of grabbed onto the side, but didn't require the top of the frame of the door to be locked into the wall. I also, while doing them in 3D, wanted to make it so I could print them out in one piece so I wouldn't have to add a hinge as like a separate metal or kind of styrene bar. This worked out really well and made it a lot easier to print them. And because this is a toy, I could kind of leave those thicker proportions and still work. So, um, you know, those are my first tests. I had a lot of failures in this print because of the piece being all one kind of item. And also like some of the parts of it were kind of thin. So here you can see what I wanted to make sure was that it was non-destructive, so you could just kind of slip it in. There's also those sort of gussets at the bottoms of the door, which I think um, the designers had to put in there to give strength to the walls. And so I took advantage of those. So the bottom of the door frame kind of slips over those and that keeps that in place. Then there's the two kind of like teeth at the top that grab onto either side of the wall and keep it in place. This is the more challenging door because it was at that kind of 45 degree angle for part of it. So it's just kind of like an odd shape and an odd design. This is my first pass where I didn't have it grabbing on on the left side. And that's kind of a point of failure you can see there. It has like way too much movement and wiggle room. And it kind of works, but I wasn't really satisfied with that. There's also another challenge that this closes like that kind of tackle box, you know, way of closing and also has this helicopter pad, like side pad that folds over. And you can see that it's actually hitting the door frame. Um, the part on that green piece is kind of like banging into it. So I had to make sure that my tolerances were really tight. And this just required a lot of iteration and a lot of printing and testing and printing and changing things. Here's a pass where it actually worked. So the tolerances were pretty good. Everything really you know, kind of sat really nicely. And, you know, I felt like the gaps and everything were really good. But it still has that flaw on the left side where that's not really seated in any kind of specific way. So I kind of went back to the drawing board and thought of like adding the teeth to that. But the problem was they would bang into that green piece. So I ended up lowering them. 
so here the first door it's pretty much done like i was happy with how that came out and um it's really easy to slip in and it's really snug so you know really good tolerances and you know, you don't have to worry about gluing it or anything like that when you put it in it just like holds and you know if you want to return your mcc you know sometimes i want my things to go back to stock i can just pull it right out but it's really nice how it gives a real door to that to the side of that vehicle that like really wants to be there be able to lock it up and then it even works when it's in the kind of open base kind of mode because it gives you know sort of like different i guess you could like cut off like this section from you know lower section there you can see i've got those teeth and they're even offset so that they won't bang into that green piece as it folds over so this works a lot better i think is it's as good a solution as the lower level door so i've been printing a bunch of these out and i have them up in my etsy store so if you want to get one you know go check it out and maybe you'll pick some up i actually spray painted mine gray just to match the mcc and so far they're keeping cobra out so hope you found this video interesting hope to see you in the next one in yojo